Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be looking at the logarithmic regression fit to non-bubble data. And we're, we're doing this every every month or so, about halfway through the month, just so we can provide a regular update to everyone as to where we are on the macro on the macro scale and whether we're still um, you know, within our regression band, if we're going above it, maybe going into speculative bubble mode. So we're gonna do this video update about once a month. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content. Please give the video a thumbs up and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Also check out the premium list if you want access to the premium content. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this is the price of Bitcoin. Uh, you know, since inception, or at least since we have price data back until, right? So this goes back to 20, 2010. You can see we were less than 10 cents. We've quickly scaled all the way up to around $10,000. If we if we choose some data here, right, to, to fit a logarithmic regression curve to, right, which by the way, it's just of the form, it's just 10 raised to the power A times L and X minus B, all in parentheses, this is the, this is the fit you get. Uh, it's not it's not really that that challenging of a fit this is i'm just trying to explain uh, how you get it and then you you put on a tolerance on there right we say okay well we recognize that this was our fit uh, let's add a kind of a tolerance window to say you know what if it's if the price of bitcoin is within this logarithmic regression band then historically it is a great time to buy bitcoin right buying in this band usually is is before the um the parabolic mode right before that price discovery mode that you can see later on in the cycle. You can see here again, we see that you know move within our logarithmic regression band, then parabolic movement, move within the regression band, parabolic movement, and then now we're still within our regression band, right? And we've been talking about this for, for quite a while now. We've been talking about this regression line since 20, 2019. By the way, it was only fit to data uh, from early 2019 and before. So any data past this point, it was not fit to at all. It has not changed at all. And you can see that it's actually done a pretty good job projecting out a year and a half. We've spent most of the time, uh, the price of Bitcoin has spent most of the time in this regression band. It left it briefly in 2019 where we had this you know, short-term speculative bubble where we came back down. But for the most part, you know, we've we've been inside this regression band, which is exactly what we expect, right? I mean, if you look back at the accumulation phase of 2015 and 2016, right? So looking from 2015 all the way out to uh, the end of 2016, maybe early 2017, we were within this regression band for the duration of that reaccumulation phase. And as we said over here, we're likely going to spend the majority of our time in 2019, 2020. And, and probably 2021 as well within this regression band, right? And, and so because of that, it's a slow grind, right? It's a slow grind. You can see we had the same thing in 2015 and 2016. It was a slow grind up to the prior all-time high. And then we went parabolic. It's the same thing, right? It's a slow grind. As, as much as everyone wants to see Bitcoin go to 20K by, the, you know, by tomorrow, by the end of the month, uh, it's just not happening, right? It's it's most likely not happening. Again, this is not financial advice, but the data tells us what we need to know. It shows us, again, that the cycles are lengthening and that we're likely going to stay within this regression band for a while longer, right? I mean, you can look at the last cycle and see that we spent just over two years within the regression band. If, you, if you're, you know, a little bit liberal and, and what you're okay with saying is in the regression band, even if you say that this part was in the regression band and you say we started in around the very end of 2018, early 2019, right? So this would be 2019 and now we're currently in 2020. We expect the cycle to lengthen, right? So we expect the accumulation phase to be longer, which we've also already seen, right? We had more golden crosses during the reaccumulation phase. We've had more crosses of the 20 week moving average during the accumulation phase this cycle than last cycle, which that cycle was more than the prior cycle before it. So we expect this to continue out, right? We expect it to stay within the regression band. Um, I would say for at least another year. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've speculated many times that I don't think that Bitcoin will reach a sustainable $20,000 until the end of 2021 or early 2022, just based on what the data suggests. Again, it doesn't mean we can't do something like 2019 where we go into a, a speculative bubble in the short term and come back down. But I think for the most part, we're going to be spending most of our time for the next year and a half, 
right, within this regression band, okay, within the regression band. And you can see by the time we get out to 2022, the fair value is going to be $20,000. Note that this is a logarithmic scale, right? So each major tick to major tick is a 10x move, okay? So I imagine that it's going to take us, right, at least another 14 to 16 months, maybe 18 months, right? First, or we're talking about the last quarter of 2021 through the first quarter of 2022 is when I think it's most likely to happen. We're looking at a pretty, uh, that window, in my opinion, is when we might reach a sustainable 20K, which is still pretty, you know, it's still pretty far out, right? But it's not so far out. I mean, if you think about it, it's only, I mean, a year from now. So a year from now will be September of 2021. And we're going to be knocking on the door of the fourth quarter of 2021 at that point. And it's also at that point, right? It's also in the fourth quarter of 2021, which is when a lot of people think Bitcoin should be getting to $100,000, right? The people that prescribe to the four-year cycle theory. But if you follow this channel, you're most likely aware that there are other theories. Maybe you don't buy into link. Maybe you don't buy into lengthening cycle theory. Um, but regardless, you know that it's there and you know that there is a possibility that it, that it does exist and that it will take longer this cycle, um, to get to the next prior all time high. And then subsequently to get to the new price discovery mode and thus parabolic move of the price of Bitcoin. Um, and again, you know, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that we've gone over it in many of the videos. So we're not going to, we're not going to spend too much time talking about it here, but I just want to reiterate, right. That, you know, if you watch this channel and this channel alone, you're in a bubble in and of itself, right? I mean, watching this channel and looking at, say, lengthening cycles and the idea that Bitcoin's not going to get to $100,000 for several more years and likely not going to get to $20,000 for another year and a half or so, this is not the norm, right? And we've been saying this for a year now, over a year. We've been saying that Bitcoin, it's going to take, you know, another, it's going to take a lot longer to get to our prior all-time high. There used to be more more skeptics of it back in 2019 because then it seemed completely ludicrous that it would take you know two to three years to get back to the prior all-time high but as we go on right as we march through the cycle uh, people are starting to wise up and realize well wait a second like we should we probably should be further along than we are and because we're not it likely does mean right that we are going to take longer to get to the prior all-time high so i imagine that as we continue marching through the end of 2020, the beginning of 2021, and we're still not at a sustainable $20,000 Bitcoin, people will then start to realize, okay, yeah, it's not, it's not going to see, we're not going to see a peak in 2021, uh, like we were originally hoping, or like they were originally hoping. And then I think it's important too, because at that point, these people might, might think that there's no point in investing in Bitcoin anymore, right? So maybe they capitulate and then we go parabolic. <laughs> so just be careful, right? We, we, we plan, we look at the data to see what the data suggests. We don't necessarily say that it has to happen a certain way, but I just want you guys to know that, you know, there's a really good chance, as we've mentioned all along, that this cycle will take a lot longer. And I think because of that, we're going to spend a significant amount of time, more time in this regression band. So I would say a lot more time within it in 2020, and a lot more time within it in 2021. Now, if we if we expand it out, right? One of the most common questions I get is, well, hey, can you expand this out so we can look at longer time frames or where you know where we're going in say 20 years? The downside of doing this, right, is we have to refit it each cycle. As I've showed in prior videos, if you fit the regression band to the bear market of the cycle before, it tends to do a pretty good job right, of predicting where it comes back down to. But you can't keep using, like, you know, just a, a fit to only this data to predict this, all the data that's like all the way out here. So what I say is, you know, I'm going to refit this curve whenever we get to the, you know, to the, um, by the by the latest, I would I would be fitting it whenever we get to the, where we go into a parabolic move, right, over the next few years and then come back down, then I think it would be worth refitting it um, and, and fine tuning it a little bit. The interesting thing is I don't actually have it on this chart. I've showed it in prior videos. If you fit it to just this data here, it doesn't, it gives you basically the same thing as also fitting it to, to some of the data that it capitulated into right here. It's not a huge difference. So I think it is somewhat honing in on, on like this fair value growth curve, right? But if you were to take this curve as, you know, the kind of the end all be all, it would predict a million dollar Bitcoin by 2033. 
But if you if you also watch the channel a lot, you know that I don't think we're going to get to a million dollar Bitcoin until probably 2040. OK, so we're looking closer to 2040 to see a million dollar Bitcoin. Probably in 2023 is when our next peak is, um, you know, and, and I say plus or minus maybe six to eight months or so. I could see it happening as early as the end of 2022 and as late as middle of 2024. So there's a bit of a window there. I do think the most likely time is 2023. And I think that the, the halving in 2024 will most likely curb the effects of the next bear market rather than rather than catalyze the next bull market. OK, so something, you know, something where it, it, it moves up the curve. We go parabolic in 2022, 2023 start to come back down, but it's not as bad because we also have the halving. So that brings some good news. Um, and then we continue on up our way. The next having, you know, maybe in 2028 or whenever it would be 2027, 2028 time frame, it's not exactly four years. Uh, this this might kind of kickstart the next one, the next bull run. But then I think that actually there's a good chance that we would still be within the same market cycle, even, even by 2032. But it might not be, right? It, it might come slightly before it. And then so if this one peaks in 2023 and then the next one, say, in 2031, 20, 2032, then probably the, the next one after that, taking us to a million dollar Bitcoin, would likely be after 2040 if the cycles are, in fact, lengthening, which I feel like we're going to have pretty strong evidence of. We, I think we do already have evidence of it. But for the for the critics, right, it's OK to be critical of it. Um, I think, you know, give it another year and we're either going to be at 100,000 Bitcoin or we're not. Right. We're either going up we're going parabolic or we're not. And the models that predicted a $100,000 Bitcoin in 2021, you know, will pretty quickly realize, if you haven't already, that most of those models are are completely useless, right? I mean, just simply put, they're just completely useless um, if, you know, if they're all predicting a, a $100,000 Bitcoin in, in 12 months or so, or 14 months. It's most likely just not happening. And then and then I imagine people will will redo the models to, to look more at, say, lengthening cycles, or maybe they'll come up with a different type of model. So let's go back and look at this. If we if we just draw again from from bottom to top, right? So bottom to top, bottom to top, bottom to top there, we're kind of like fanning out. And so the general idea is to see see this pattern continue something like that. And for us to slowly move up again within the regression band for a while and then go parabolic uh, sometime in, say, 2022, 2023 time frame. And then in 2024 to come back down into our fair value fit. Right. And at that point. So I think that Bitcoin will peak at somewhere between 100 to 200 thousand dollars. And then it will come back down into the regression band over the next one to two years after 2023, maybe 2024, 2025. And it'll come back down to its fair value at the time, which I think will be around forty to fifty thousand dollars. So this is looking four years out, four to five years out. I think the fair value of Bitcoin will be forty to fifty thousand dollars. But I think that there will be some exciting things that happen between now and then. I mean, obviously, a forty thousand dollar Bitcoin today would be great, right? But I think I think there's more likely it's more likely than not that we're going to see a nice speculative bubble form in Bitcoin over the next three years or so. And then it's going to come back down into the fair value regression band at around forty to fifty thousand dollars. And if you look at the prior all time high from or not this one, so the one from 2013, you can note that we were in the regression band when we got back to the prior all time high in 2017. And if we extend that right to the current cycle, then we're looking at again end of 2021 or early 2022 to get to that point. So we still have a while. We still it's a slow grind upwards, right? It's a very slow grind, uh, but just I think patience will will be rewarded. I, I do. I really do. Um, here, if we if all we're going to do is we're going to take the percent difference between the price and the fair value logarithmic regression fit. So you can see that each cycle we're getting we're not getting as far away as we were the prior cycle. It's generally decreasing. So, you know, I, I think that we're slowly going to go back up to this overvaluation region, right, of two to three hundred percent overvalued, overvalued. So if the fair value of Bitcoin reaches, say, like, you know, thirty to forty thousand dollars by the peak of the next cycle and we're, you know, 200 to 300 percent overvaluation overvalued, then we're probably looking at around hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. So that's that's generally what we're looking at. And I mean, I know it sounds it can sound complicated. The price of Bitcoin can sound very complicated sometimes. I, I think that the short term moves are it's just as I've said before, right? It's a random walk, uh, geometric Brownian motion, more or less in the short term, not the long term in the short term, but that 
looking at the macro scale, right? It's it's sometimes just as easy as one, two, three, right? You just, you look at the fair value fit, you decide, okay, this seems to be an accumulation phase, I'm gonna DCA in accordingly, or are, are we overvalued? And therefore you need to take a step back and say, you know, I've my, my, my investments are, are up significantly over the last few years. It's time to start moving out, right? So there's a time to move in, there's a time to move out. You don't wanna be the smart, you don't wanna be the dumb money coming in at the top or the dumb money selling at the bottom, right? You wanna be the smart money buying when it's when we're in the accumulation zone, right? And selling when we're at the the upper upper level of the accumul or of the of the sell region, the overvaluation region, which we'll show in another video on the channel in a few days to give you an update on that as well. So uh, a lot of people also like to see the 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 price of Bitcoin on a log scale versus time, where time is also on a log scale. Okay, so in this case you can see this is what it looks like so we're we're you know we're, we're moving up and and if if we continue what i think right we're looking at a peak sometime in in this time frame over in 2023 sometime in that time frame so looking to stay within the regression band for a while but ultimately coming out of it and peaking around 100k over the next few years and 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 you can see right i mean it doesn't we don't necessarily have to follow this path we could theoretically come back down uh, you know, that's a bearish scenario, right? We go back down to the 200 week moving average, which happens to be at the lower bound of the regression band right now. It will move out of it soon, uh, but right now the 200 week moving average corresponds to the lower bound on the regression curve. So if we were to go back down and test the 200 week moving average, that's what it look, would look like. I still think we would have plenty of time to get to where we're ultimately going out over the next few years. Um, if you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel. We also do have the premium list the prices are going up really soon they're going up in 13 days on september 28th so if you want to get grandfathered in at the lower price make sure you sign up before the prices go up right uh that way you get grand grandfathered in you have this uh you know this more data science approach you have access to you know for as long as you want at least for the duration of the market cycle if that's what you're looking for and then you can you can use it even when the prices are up, you're still paying the lower price. So make sure you sign up before the 28th of September if you wanna get the lower price. And the prices are going to be going up significantly, right? It's not just gonna be a 10% move up. It is a pretty significant price hike. So make sure you get in, you can pay with crypto um, for six or 12 months to get a discount. A 12 month subscription will get you a 15% discount. If you're curious what you get with the premium list, you get access to six different things, okay? You get access to the premium reports, a weekly premium report, which means you also get access to all the older premium reports. So you'll have a lot of reading material if you're looking for something to do. You also get access to all the premium videos, right? We put a weekly premium video out, so you get access to that too. Also a private Telegram alerts channel, which is where I'll put out my candid thoughts on the market. A lot of the times I'll say, you know, what I'm doing in the market. There's also a private chat room, a risk dashboard, which is what I use to trade these momentum shifts in the market as well as an alert, as well as a, a DCA, a dynamic DCA selling strategy dashboard. And, and in this dashboard, you can basically go in and put what you think the, the peak price of say Bitcoin or Ethereum would be. And then you can look at various strategies and how they would perform. If you get too aggressive, what are you leaving on the table if it doesn't hit your, your target? Or if you're a little bit more moderate, you can say, okay, I'm gonna maybe start selling a little bit earlier, but at least this way I'm securing gains. Whereas if I get too aggressive, you know, I could watch the bubble come and go. Imagine people in 2017 who were waiting for a $25,000 Bitcoin before they sold anything and it never happened, right? So you wanna avoid this. This is why I talk about on the channel, dynamic DCA. You dynamically DCA your sells on the way up, just like you would DCA your buys um, when we're in the accumulation region. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about the video. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel, trying to reach 40,000 people. Check out the premium list. Also check out the Telegram channel if you're looking for a community and I will see you guys next time. Bye.